in some cases, you might want to take extra information along in your emails to send out via SignButler. You can control this uh, by using a data source and getting the information that you actually need want. So in this case, we want to get information from our contact that is linked to our primary um, opportunity contact role uh, in our Salesforce opportunity. So yeah, let's get this uh, first name and last name of our contact and to add to our emails. Okay, what if we do nothing? So I've actually created in this case emails for uh, all of the uh, the settings here, all of the different emails. Um, these emails are just created in HTML, as you can see. Yeah? And these emails, yeah, they define what uh, what uh, what you want to send out. In these emails, you normally have some um, uh, some merge fields like this one: message dot first name, message dot last name. Those are fixed. There only are a few of them. Uh, but now you want to add information um, that you don't have out of the box. So you want to add information that you want to select yourself. Okay, let's take a look what happens if I send out an email right now to Jack. So I am going to just click the button here to send out the email. So now it will generate the document. Uh, when the document is generated, it will. Uh, we have chosen not to use the silent uh, sign butler implementation here, so we'll get an uh, inspirational quote, and then we know now the sign has been sent out. I already get a notification on my cell phone, so I guess if I just refresh here, yes, the email is already there. You can see it just says hi, and then Igor Stuyver has sent the document. So that's me. I'm the user currently in Salesforce. So that's where he gets the Igor Stuyver from. Okay, now we want this to say hi, Jack. So how do we go about that? Let's first take a look at the HTML. So in the HTML, uh, sorry, let's go a step back and first take a look at um, the data source that we are going to generate for this. Let's get, let's generate a data source. Uh, I call it primary contact for signing. You can have any name, of course, but it's just a name that I've selected. It has to be a single object. And in this single object, I write a query. And in this query, I actually get the uh, contact, uh, first name, last name, email address, and all of this other information from the opportunity contact role. So this is the object in Salesforce we're getting it from. It has to be the primary of uh, the primary contact so uh, that we are selecting, and it has to be linked to the opportunity that we are actually using. So we're now going to say to uh, Sign Butler, hey, use this information as well, and you can use this information in any uh, email that you send out. So we go about that by going to our sign request. And I'm just going to duplicate this one. So to leave this uh, email templates here, I'm going to go to my sign request. I'm going to edit my sign request. I'm going to say that I want to have uh, the template group name demo templates because that's the one I'm currently uh, um, yeah, uh, using here and changing here. So. I'm going to set this one and then I'm going to actually add an extra data source. So I'm going to select the primary contact for signing. That's the data source I've just shown earlier. And now that's it. That's all I have to do for now. Next, next, submit. So my configuration is changed. Of course, my email doesn't know that it should use these extra uh, fields that I now have uh, available in my email. So. Let's see how we're going to control that. Um, this is a part where I can just copy paste it. I prepared it. So what am I saying here? I'm going to uh, add an, uh, a span. That's a part of HTML. And I'm going to tell it that it can use uh, from the global variable. Uh, so that's an, uh, um, yeah, an, 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 uh, the top level variable in this uh, setup uh, that it can use the fields contact.firstName. Take a good look um, because this field is actually this one here, contact.firstName. Uh, mind that the 
API names and the uh, case sensitivity of the API names, the uppercase and lowercase are very important. So you must make sure that these uh, have the right uh, upper and lowercase in your query when you write them. Um, and then I'm also going to add the last name. So this is what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to write hi, uh, the first name, hi, last, uh, last name in this uh, query. Copy this one, put it in here. So I'm just going to add it where it says hi. So what am I expecting is that it will say here now, hi, first name, last name of my primary contact. Okay, cool. Copy this entire HTML. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my email template, remove the body that's here, paste it in and say, and I want to save this. So now, okay, all my templates have saved. So from now on, uh, every time I change a template or I change uh, or I run this, uh, um, I've, or I run this again, it will use this new template. So let's uh, take, let's take a look. I'm going to run this again. Okay, so generating the documents. Now it's gonna call sign butler with my documents and tell it to uh, use the uh, the email that I've just uh, sent out. Everything went fine. Okay, I already get a notification on my cell phone. So I assume that I also got a notification here. So I have two mails now. And as you can see, it says, indeed says, hi, Jack Rogers. So it means it actually worked. So I have now my, um, I actually have now my extra information that I want to add to my email. If you want to add other uh, information coming from other uh, sources, other uh, objects, uh, whatever, uh, you can select all of this. Uh, remind you, for the moment, you can only have one data source to add as extra information. Um, and it has to be a single data source. One thing that I want to add, because uh, maybe if you are selecting data from managed packages, uh, you can have something like uh, saying a Cadmus score underscore underscore, and then you have to escape these underscores. So you will have to do it like this. But if you're not using uh, data from a managed package, uh, like a CPQ or something, then you can just, of course, forget about it and it's not required. Okay, that's it. I think uh, this proves that you can just now use data coming from other data sources in to uh, enrich your SignButler emails.